guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Wild Ascent. But not only Wild Ascent, it is the competitive variant of the game. In Wild Ascent, the competitive variant of the game, it's an arena style tactics game in which you're going to be selecting either 1v1 or 2v2. It takes about an hour to play depending on the setup as well as at ages 14 and up to play the game in my opinion. You're going to be basically selecting a character as well as monsters to work on your team in this arena style combat game. And you'll be selecting your own loadout for each character. You're going to get your own character board with the special abilities as well as a base attack, special abilities you can choose for passives and actives, and then of course you'll be selecting weapons that will go along with your character as well. Players will be taking turns going back and forth in a combat style tactics arena in which you're going to be utilizing dice, you'll be utilizing different abilities and different passives to try and destroy your opponents. There's different variants in even this variant of the game, whether you play King of the Hill or Deathmatch or uh, Last Man Standing, in which you're basically just trying to eliminate your opponent from the board or your opponent's champions. If you can do that, you win the game, and if you can't, you will suffer the shame and uh, disfortune in the tactical arena combat or style variant of, of Wild Ascent. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what the game comes with and how it is uh, put together. So here we have the tactics variant of Wild Ascent and everything that's going to come with, minus whatever Kickstarter goodies that might come included or anything else that just wasn't sent here in this prototype. But nevertheless, let's go into it. So first of all, there's all of the monsters here in the game, along with their monster extra tokens, which are also miniatures, which can come from different monsters here. And uh, you have them shown here. These are all the characters in the game. There's two of them that are actually based on the main characters. These are the ones we have to show. The other ones are for the co cooperative version, but we just go ahead and show you just like this anyway. Uh, as well as all their boards. These are basically the different variants to how you want to set up the different character boards. So you'll be putting these things there based on the player. And then you're also going to get these items here, which you'll be drafting as well. The items will go with the symbol. These are going to be the different tiles you place on the board to make it different. Uh, you're going to do a half and half board style in which the one team will be on this side, one team will be on this side, and you'll be placing them down this row here in which you'll be placing the different terrain to make the game unique in every single every single time over here are once again all the tokens that are going to be a bleed effects and whatnot as well as all of the life counters which is going to go along oops this board over here these are actually the uh, different cards that whether they're edicts or demands in which basically uh, the game will change every round in some unique way or you're going to be asked to do something specific and if you do you're going to accomplish your goal and these are the specific i think the specific uh, competitive variant tokens here that are going to be used throughout the game you'll also be using a new set of die here and this is not a separate game as far as the cooperative variant is concerned you get everything in in one game but this is just specifically talking about the components you'll be utilizing for this specific variant anyway let's come up and i'll explain how it kind of works i'll, I'll fiddle with it down below and show you kind of what is going to happen in the competitive game and if you want to get a full walkthrough of the game you can go ahead and check out in the description below what we are doing we had a full-on 1v1 and you can see how the game is played but after that, we'll go ahead and get into my review of the game, so let's go. In the competitive variant of Wild Descent, you're going to simply be choosing a character or a champion as well as a team of monsters to help fight with you in an arena. You're going to be going back and forth with your opponents or your teams, and you're going to be trying to destroy your opponent's leader or all of their monsters, depending on the different scenarios for this chosen game. Of course, you can always change it up every single time that you would like. Uh, then you're also going to be placing down the different terrain pieces, you'll be loading out special different customizations for each of the different characters and utilizing different boards which has nothing to do with the co cooperative variant this is actually different in every way you'll be adding your different skills as well as your different weapons and of course you'll have two specific passive and or active abilities you can use as well as your base stats in the game after the setup is all complete you're going to be going back and forth and doing the same thing you'll be moving you'll be using an action and then you'll be passing turn until everybody's had their turn after that happens then you're going to be doing something interesting which is these cards you'll be drawn and something unique will happen, like an edict, all attacks have minus one range. Or demand, condition, each ascent must not use active skills or equipment this round. If you succeed, you'll get something. If you fail, you'll get something. Uh, edict, motivation, at the end of the round, assign one damage to each gladiator, not adjacent to an enemy gladiator. So that can uh, 
can cause some problems too, as well as there's stay in play effects. And uh, you'll be going back and forth trying to complete your scenario objective. It's a simple slice of life portion of the game. You go in, you fight, and you get out. And whoever is victorious is the, you know, whoever does the, the, the specific scenario's goal is victorious and will win the game. If not, you'll be suffering some sad and unfortunate loss and people will laugh at you. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the setup of the game as well as I'll give you an idea of how uh, you're going to be choosing different portions of the, the the drafting aspect of the game. Okay, so we're back here and I'm going to go ahead and show you how the drafting works a little bit and then I'm going to show you how the setup works and then kind of how it's going to function as far as the tactical goes. So let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, you're going to choose larger monsters than smaller and then heroes. You can do it different ways, but it's recommended to do it this way, so I'm going to show you this way. First, if you're playing a two-player game, you select one and then the second player will select two and then you'll select one. So first player will take one, second player will take these two, and then first player will take this one again. Now you've drafted your main monsters here. Then you can go to the small all monsters the first player will take one the second player will take two and the uh, first player will then take two and the second player will take one and you'll have equal monsters yet again this are all five of the monsters you're going to need then you're gonna go ahead and select your heroes in a two-player game it's selecting one and one in a four player it's selecting one two and then one in this case we'll just go ahead and select one for one player and select one for another player the rest of these will not be needed especially in a two player game so you're going to go ahead and set these aside then you're going to take your loadouts based on how you selected and it would be the same thing as well in this case we're not going to need to because they're different uh they're different symbols required on each of the guys so in this case you select one of these here and you go ahead and place that down and you're going to go ahead and select one of these items here and place that down then you're going to go ahead and take these you won't need these for the rest of the game either and this character as well is going to get to select his items i'm just going to go ahead and do these randomly but you will probably want to choose choose because it makes a difference as to how that works. Set the rest of the cards aside. You're not going to need them. Each player is also going to get a set of terrain pieces which you will be utilizing. I'll just go ahead and move them off to the side and you're going to get your passive abilities. Simply select two of them and place them down here. You're going to go ahead and look at the character's uh, face. It will show you on here and then you're going to choose them and put them down. Anything from blood riot to mending. That's just interesting. That's a good, good differentiation there. You won't need the rest of them as well. Here's Coralt, and we'll go ahead and select two for him. He's going to take Soul Blast and Onslaught. And that is your setup for your character's loadout. Now, it's a very unique character all in itself. Hopefully, these are the right sides. It doesn't matter. And uh, move the rest of these out of here. We're not going to need these either. Okay, so now the board. Let's go ahead and talk about how this is going to work. One player will place on one side. One player will place on another side. And each of the players or teams are going to start putting these things down. You're not going to put them down in these two areas here. You're going to put them down in the middle, and you can't have more than one in each area. So one player will place one here, one player will place one here, and it's going to go back and forth like that as players place them down in the different areas. Uh, so that way it will make a unique and interesting board every single time. So something like... Eh, something like that, I imagine. I keep these two spaces, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and you won't need the rest of these. You'll set them aside. They all do different things. These are spinning blades. There's a trip pitfall. Here are some of the things that block sight, so on and so forth. Then you'll be placing based on the monsters. I'm just going to go ahead and select random monsters for each player just to uh, increase in time because it doesn't necessarily matter for this, just so you get a good idea of how setup works. So you're going to make sure that you set this the monsters up how you want in the order you want because they're all going to have their own unique order. And uh, then you're also going to make sure you have your character on the board too. And uh, the other player will do the same thing. Like I said, make sure you set it up correctly and in the right order because if you don't, you're going to have characters that are trapped and that's, that is no good. There you go, you should have six on each side. You have all of your characters in their specific order, and then you're going to be ready to begin the game. You'll select a single player to go first. They're going to choose uh, their first starting character, and they're going to do whatever special abilities are on the character. Make sure you also have all your health set up, depending on the character's health totals. You can go ahead and look on the cards, and it'll tell you 12, 15, 10, 15, 15, so on and so forth for each of them. These are all the extra, uh, these are the characters, and these are actually the monsters. You just set them on the board based on what is in play. And then you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, tactically fighting. And then, uh, so, you know, the same thing as other game. The same, same way the movement works, going back and forth, moving forward. 
um, and you'll be taking your speed, and then you'll be taking your action, which could involve either your special abilities, your weapons, or your main specific attacks, right? So if he, she had three speed, one, two, and then I could move for three, and then based on her range, whether she'd hit or not, she probably wouldn't hit this at this distance. The next player would get to go. He would take his main character, one, two, three, maybe four, and like like you saw that that you can actually do that, no big deal. And uh, she would check his range as well. After everybody has gone, you're going to take one of these cards, these cards here, and something's going to happen. In this case, it's an edict. This one's a stay in play, poison mist, which actually was in our walkthrough. So if you're interested in seeing exactly how this one works, it assigns a damage to each gladiator after they move, and it stays in play. And some of them do, some of them don't. And the one we played was the death, the uh, deathmatch variant, in which if you destroyed your opponent's leader, the game was over. You'd be utilizing all of the monsters, all of their movement, and health is written on the corners. They're uh, basically damage is written here in the middle and then you have the physical and magical defenses and their special abilities you probably be using these little guys here as they pop on the board based on the different types of monsters you have you'll have the specific character specific consumables and all that for the uh, competitive variant and then of course your basic tokens that you would normally be using throughout the game moving your characters around the board in a tactical like notion depending on the type of game it is trying to defeat your enemies dealing damage to them, and uh, I think there's a way, oh yeah, damage is written on the board here, obviously, and if they die, you're going to lose that character, and you're just simply going to swap, maybe one, two, this one's dead, so it would go to this one, and back and forth, back and forth, it would go. As your characters die, though, you're going to be losing less and less actions, so you have to be careful. Not only that, but you're going to also be taking these dice here before each round, which is interesting, and you'll be rolling them, and they're going to have different symbols, whether it's gaining health or gaining, gaining shields, or gaining uh, speed, and you'll be putting them down on the characters of your choice uh, that, uh, that are going to then help you either by healing them or giving them defense and whatnot. Both players are going to do that for both sides, or teams if that's the case, and you'll be basically giving your monsters and characters boosts throughout the game, which is also pretty interesting and unique, but otherwise it is a basic style tactics game on this arena-like grid. All right, let's come up and talk about how uh, the game kind of works and how I feel about it. Okay, so Wild Ascent, the competitive variant, if you want to know about the cooperative one, there's a video in the description below that not only shows you the walkthrough for both of these as well as shows you the review for that one specifically this is just covering the competitive one just for reference so let's go ahead and get into it with a couple caveats these blue dice every round you roll them and you're gonna put them on your characters the only ones that will affect your main character though is gonna be the heal the rest of them are gonna go on to your monsters they're gonna give you bonus stats for that round and you can have two per monster provided these die are not this uh, are uh, unique so you can have one strength and one shield for instance on a monster um, at the end of every round, you'll be utilizing these cards here. So let's go ahead and talk about now what I think about this game. So it is a tactics game at its core. This specific variant of the game is completely tactics, but it has a lot of customization which is either going to be a positive or a negative for you. Uh, first of all, like I said, you're going to be drafting monsters. There are the large monsters, and then there are small, smaller monsters, and they're all going to have their own unique abilities, and they're all going to have their own unique passives and activates, and all that good stuff. They're basically just smaller characters. That is going to provide you with drafting these guys and determining your best team as you go through it. Not only that, but then you're going to take your character, which is also going to give you a lot of customization. You're going to get to choose the different passives and active skills. You're going to get to choose your weapons and your balancing as to how you want your character to interact with your monsters because it matters and as you play the game you're going to get better so there is a learning curve to this game it is probably more of a learning curve than the previous the cooperative variant that when you work together in this one it's about determining what your opponents are going to try to do based on the style of play you're going to be doing the king of the hill or the uh, last man standing so on and so forth uh, what's also unique about the game is these blue die like I was just talking about being able to roll these to try and get a little bit of an advantage which will help you if you're already ahead it'll push you a little farther perhaps or might not do anything um, or it's going to uh, help the person who's uh, farther behind and it's also based on how you place them down like I said more choice the tactics portion of the game is a simple tactics game it reminds me like any other tactics game as far as how you move the monsters around and whatnot uh, there's some cool little things like attacking behind your opponent makes a difference and how the range works and how the different uh, terrain pieces are going on the board but for the most part most tactics games are like that another interesting thing too is these round cards at the end of the game there's three different types of them and as opposed to just like doing one of these three different types uh, it provides 
more aspects. For instance, the mans. These are like quests that are interactive during your round of play. Maybe you're going to want to uh, use an active skill or an equipment this round, and if you don't, you're going to suffer two momentum loss, which is basically like a little quest throughout each round, which is pretty cool. And then you have edicts, things that happen that last forever. And then you have whims, slay all summoned monsters or creatures with three or less health. So it's just things that happen randomly throughout the game, which just changes the flow, and it can change the tide of victory as well, which is really, really interesting and unique. Uh, for me, this is a really cool little customizable tactics game. It has a lot going for it. It's It was, if there was a solid like right in the middle tactics game this is just above that of course the competitive variant is not as favorable for us as the as the cooperative variant of the game i like the hunt more because it's very very unique in what you're trying to do and i i don't want to like give too much away with that because you can go ahead and watch the review for it but it, it has that extra that even extra aspect of going to town and increasing your uh, characters and whatnot and this one is kind of a back and forth tactical game that has a lot of choice involved and it has a lot of decision making skills involved like this is going to tailor to those specific tactics heavy players high strategy uh uh, discipline and all that good stuff. It, it feels like a battle of chess that is ever changing. If you like tactic style combat games, this is definitely one you need to pick up if you like a lot of customization. These are things that are either going to be positives for you or negatives for you. For us, we really enjoyed the game. I tried to get a consensus of everybody I've had play this game, and other, I couldn't find a lot of negatives due to the fact that a lot of us here like tactics games. So it's just going to simply come down to if you enjoy this style of play, if you enjoy the artwork and the theme, if you like these miniatures and in my opinion these things are very 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 good um, you can go ahead and get a good look at them on our walkthrough as well but overall the tactics game is a lot of fun and provides a lot of choice which I think is the most important thing when it comes down to these games without all that it would be a simple basic standard tactics game so making the choice to include all this was excellent and I give it my seal of approval all right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this game, don't forget to check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We really do greatly appreciate it. Go ahead and check it out. Wild Ascent on Kickstarter down below in the description. Both cooperative and competitive come together, so you can go ahead and check out both of them. You can check out the walkthroughs or whatever, or just simply go straight to the campaign and make up your own mind. Like I said, all of these um, opinions are mine and mine alone. You should definitely consider what you think is going to be best for you, and then if I help, great. All right. Right. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfiltergamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have our Halloween uh, Kickstarter lists going on and f games that you should pick up for Halloween. My, my editor did that, as well as two giveaways on the site. Also, don't forget to go ahead and check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They got tons of great stuff on their site as well, even more giveaways than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I love you, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.